So you're looking for a new bike. You know you want to get into this sport a little bit more seriously. You know you're going to want a bike for riding around town, exploring paths and streets. But there's also a chance that your friends are going to invite you out and go mountain biking. So what kind of a bike do you get if you want a bike to do it all and especially to give yourself a good chance of loving mountain biking? This is the 2021 Marin Bobcat Trail 3 and I think this could be a great option for that first really good experience mountain biking while still being a great useful bike for day-to-day -day exploring of the streets and paths around your town. I'm going to show you the specifications on this bike, tell you some of the things about it that we really like, that is going to make sure that you're going to enjoy this as a mountain bike, and we'll give you the weight and show you a few different options related to this bike. So let's get to it. So the Bobcat Trail 3 is the first price point of three different levels of Bobcat Trail. Bobcat Trail 3, 4, and 5. So this one starting at 829 and then going all the way up to 1249 for the Bobcat Trail 5. With those increases in prices, you get a little bit more off-road capability. Um, but on this particular video, we're just going to concentrate on this Bobcat Trail 3. The Bobcat Trail 3 is available in two wheel sizes and two colors, and there is also the Marin Wildcat Trail 3, which is essentially the same bike, and this is the bike that they design for female riders. And it is only available in a 27.5 wheel, but it also comes in uh, two different colors. So within this Bobcat Trail and Wildcat Trail family, we have four colors, two wheel sizes, and all the specifications between the two are basically the same though. So uh, as I list off the uh, details of this Bobcat Trail, they all apply to the Wildcat Trail as well. So the main features of the Bobcat Trail 3 are that it's an aluminum frame, 120 millimeter travel suspension fork, and a 2x8 drivetrain system using a Shimano Altus rear derailleur. The shifters on these guys will actually vary. We've seen different production runs coming either with a micro shift uh, 2x8 shifter, like the one that I'm showing you here. We've also seen some show up with Shimano Acera uh, shifters on there. Between the two, I wouldn't be concerned either way. Um, they're basically equal in performance. The brakes on this bike are a Tektro hydraulic disc brake. They are matched with 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear. So those hydraulic disc brakes are gonna give us braking that's more powerful than a traditional old school rim brake. And where you notice it even more pronounced is if you ever end up riding in wet conditions, your braking remains really consistent with a hydraulic disc brake. The frame features mounting positions for full wrap fenders and for pannier racks. You also get water bottle mounting positions on the seat tube and the down tube. One thing to note on these bikes is because of that uh, seat tube water bottle mounting position, these bikes come with very, very long seat posts, so it's quite common that we have to chop the seat post down a little bit uh, to work for a lot of riders' leg lengths. The frames also feature internal cable routing. So that is the rear brake hose coming out of the frame there where the rear brake hose and the rear derailleur cable go into the frame there. And a nice thing is that this bike also has the capability of putting a dropper seat post on there. So that means this little unused cable port here 
That is where your dropper post would go into the seat tube so you could actually do the internal cable routing for that. And the seat tube is also a 309 millimeter diameter, which is the most common dropper size diameter. So you won't have any issues finding a dropper post to work on your frame. Tires are 2.25 inches wide. This tread is one that's going to be pretty decent as that uh, give mountain biking a try kind of a tread. If you ended up only using this bike uh, for more city use, you'd be able to get tire treads that are gonna be a little bit more city appropriate. But that's where a mountain bike like this becomes a really, really good do-it-all bike. If you find that you aren't ever mountain biking, you can basically put a little bit of a smoother tire on and you're not stuck feeling like you're rumbling around. As compared to a hybrid bike, you really don't get the option of putting a big chunky tire on to give yourself a chance of really uh, experiencing mountain biking properly. So in this category of price point hardtails, which I consider any hardtail under about $1,200 to be in, one of the standout features of the Bobcat Trail that really makes it a standout for actual mountain biking is its geometry and the fact that it has a 120 millimeter travel fork. Virtually everything else in this category would have a 100 millimeter travel fork and its geometry would be way less new school, actual mountain bike inspired. What I mean by that is this bike is designed to work around having this short handlebar stem, a 780 millimeter wide handlebar, which when you sit on this will feel quite wide, but it's designed around this sort of thing, a slack 67 degree head tube angle, relatively steep 74 and a half degree seat tube angle, the ability to put a dropper seat post on here, and then for the actual reach of the frame, which is essentially this horizontal distance going from seat to handlebars, being lengthened to accommodate and to work around having a shorter stem. All of these things add up to a bike that is gonna be that much more confidence inspiring and that much more stable when you actually are riding on bumpy off-road trails. So this bike here, while it may not be the hugest value bike, as far as if you just look at a list of parts that has the derailers and brakes and all that sort of thing, it'll be one of the better priced bikes. But the big standout here is the way it rides and the confidence it's gonna inspire in an, in an off-road setting. For sizing, there are five different sizes offered in this bike. So extra small through extra large. The extra small, small and medium are gonna be available in 27.5 wheels. Extra small, we would say consider that if you're in roughly in the range five foot to five foot four. Small, five four to five seven. Medium, five seven to five ten. Large, five ten to six foot one. And extra large, six foot one to six foot four. So as I mentioned, the Bobcat Trail and Wildcat Trail are essentially the same bike, the same specification in both the Bobcat and Wildcat 3. The difference really comes down to this detail in the frame. On the Bobcat, we have a straight top tube and then going into this little gusset. On a Wildcat Trail, we have a curved top tube without a gusset there. That is pretty much the only standout noticeable feature between the two bikes. So if you're a woman, you could choose to go this way. If you're a guy, you could choose to go that way. There really isn't any reason that you should be shy about going either way if you prefer a color. Or in this case here on a Wildcat, it means that you can get a size large with 27.5 wheels, where in a Bobcat, a size large is only available in 29 inch wheels. So who is the Bobcat Trail and the Wildcat Trail for? Basically, to sum it up, 
This bike is going to be perfect if you're looking for a quality bike that's going to be great for riding around town, but you know you want to give mountain biking a try. Mountain biking won't be your primary thing. You're not going to become a hardcore mountain biker, but you want to get out, hit the trails, maybe give it a try four or five times in the summer. This is the bike that's going to be a great daily rider and then give you a good chance of having a good time when you go exploring those real mountain bike trails. This is Bike Bros. We're a bike shop in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. We love talking about bikes and we love helping people get on the bike that's going to put the biggest smile on their face. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.